Hi, Bob from PineGrow here. In the default PineGrow workspace layout, the library, project, and history panels are grouped together on the left side of the page view. In this video, I'm going to take a deeper dive into the first of these three, the PineGrow Web Editor Library panel. This panel provides a wealth of ready-made elements to be dragged to the page, as well as the opportunity to make your own. Let's get started. The library panel is organized into tabs that contain one or more sub-panels of elements that can be dragged to your page view or tree panels. These can range from simple HTML elements like divs to complex elements like an entire drop-down navigation menu. All the frameworks that come with PineGrow have a list tab as con that contains the major elements of that framework presented as grouped buttons. Here, for example, a grid. Some frameworks also have additional tabs that represent all or a portion of these elements as they would look on the actual web page, shown here in the Components tab. Finally, you can also add your own tabs to the library panel by clicking on the plus icon. We'll cover this in more depth later in this video. As mentioned previously, the main feature of the list tab is a number of subpanels that contain elements that can be added to your pages. Hovering over any of these elements will give you a preview of the code. We will go through the various ways that this code can be added to your page after we look at other elements of the list tab. The number and grouping of subpanels is going to depend on what framework is loaded. Each of these subpanels can be collapsed by clicking the caret to the right side of the panel to make scrolling through it a little easier. As you can see from this message, you can also alt click or option click to close all of the tabs. The number of elements for some frameworks can be quite long, so finding the desired element by simply scrolling can be laborious. To make this a little easier, PineGrow provides a search bar at the top of the list tab. Typing in the search bar updates in real time and searches through element names, subpanel names like forms, and HTML elements. Another PineGrow feature to make putting pages together fast and easy is the recently used subpanel. This subpanel doesn't exist until you start ele adding elements to your page. Opening it up will show the last 10 elements used. The last common subpanel on the list tab is the insert code box. This box is very handy for inserting custom code into your page, for example, a snippet copied from the internet. Once your HTML or simplified pug is entered into the code box, you'll get a new element that can be added to your page. We'll come back later to how you can make your own elements be displayed in the list tab. But first, let's dive into the different ways that PineGrow provides for adding elements from the list to your page. Elements can be added to your page in a couple of different ways. Which one you use depends on how you feel most comfortable. As you've seen already, one of the primary ways that you can add elements to the page is by simply dragging and dropping an element from the list to your page view just like I did with the badge or that other custom div. You just drag and drop. As you drag the element onto the page, you'll see two changes. First, an orange line. This is going to indicate where your new element will be inserted. Second, as you drag it over the page, you'll see various items highlighted in green. This indicates where in the DOM hierarchy the particular new element will be inserted. So you can see four potential messages. Let's test with this alert. You can see if we hover here, the alert is highlighted in green and our badge would be inserted before it. If we hover here, we can see our alert is in green and our message in the orange box says that it'll be inserted after our alert. If we hover again over the alert and we're slightly in front of it, we'll see that our badge will be prepended at the same level as the alert. And then finally, if we hover over the alert again, slightly after it, we'll see it's going to be appended to our alert. Before going into the other ways to add elements to the page, I want to start with this fresh template to tell you about another feature of PineGrow, the repeater. This repeater allows you to add multiple elements to the page with a single drag and drop operation. Let's see how it works. First, we'll drag a container and then a row to the page. I want to add multiple columns within this row, but rather than dragging them individually, I'll use the repeater. I want to add three columns, so before dragging the column element, I'll simply type a three. Now, when I drag the column element to the page, you can see that it quickly adds three of the same item. Just like dragging to the page view, elements can also be dragged to the tree panel. 
In this case, the orange box will appear at the location the element will be added and indented relative to other elements to represent if it will be nested inside of the element or will be placed above or below. So let's close this down and build the same thing by dragging to the tree. So we're gonna put another container. We're gonna put it after the existing container, but at the same level. And then inside that container, we wanna place a row. So we'll drag that row over and make sure it's indented by one to indicate that it's being placed inside the container. And then finally, to use the repeater, again, we'll type three. Then we'll grab our column and make sure it's nested inside the row by making sure that it's indented by one. We can see once again, we've recreated that three column row that we can then uh, add our custom content into. If you're uncomfortable with drag and drop operations, PineGrow presents some additional options through context menus. The first way is by selecting an element either in the page view or in the tree. So for example, if we click on this. Next, go to the list and right click on any element. For example, this image thumbnail. This will cause a context menu to appear that gives the same options as the drag and drop. So for example, we can prepend this to the paragraph. As with any of the other operations, you can also use a repeater by typing a number before right-clicking the element. This method of adding to the page actually gives us two additional options. We can choose to replace the existing highlighted element with the element we selected in the list. We can also choose to copy the code to the clipboard. After copying to the clipboard, you can paste into the code box and quickly make any changes that you want to the code before dragging it back to the page. As we'll explore, there are other tabs in the library panel, both to preserve screen real estate or if we want to use one of the other library tabs, Pine Grow provides us a way to add in elements without the list tab being open. So here we can close it down. You can take advantage of this method from either the tree or page view panels. In the tree panel, there are two different approaches. Hovering over the dividers between elements will cause an orange line to appear. Right-clicking this line will open a context menu. The top item on this menu is insert. Hovering over this item will then open an additional drop-down menu that allows you to select from the list elements. Once you select an element, you'll see four icons appear that will indicate whether you want to insert before, insert after, prepend, or append the particular item. If you highlight an item in the page view and right click, you'll get the same menu with the same options to insert before, insert after, prepend, or append. The second method in the tree view is to first highlight an item and then use the menu on the right side of the tree view. There are four icons, each with an orange line indicating where it will be inserted. When you go ahead and click on one of these, you will get a pop-up menu. This looks just like the list view. You can choose whatever you wish to insert in. Finally, in the page view, we have one more option for inserting elements. The selected element menu can be toggled on and off from the toggle visual helpers control in the top bar of the Pine Grove window located here. Right now, it's turned on. And as you can see, with this button selected, we have a menu that has a number of options, including duplicate the item or inserting an element. If we click on this, once again, we get something that looks just like the list with these four icons indicating where the element will be inserted. So in this case, maybe we can insert a badge after the button. In some of the frameworks, an extra sub panel will appear in the list tab if the element highlighted in the tree or the page view can have elements commonly nested inside. For example, in the Bootstrap 4 framework, rows often contain columns. So if we were to highlight a row, you can see that this new sub panel pops up called Insert into Selected, and it will have a list of the most commonly inserted items that we can just click on. PineGrow doesn't restrict you only to the pre-made elements. We've already covered the code box, but we can also select any item on our page to include as a drag and drop element. To accomplish this, simply hover or select the item in the page view or tree and then right click. So for example, if we like this column, right click, and then this time instead of selecting on insert, we say add as HTML snippet. Once added to the snippets, we can save this as a custom library to bring into any page. 
We can also do things like rename or delete the particular snippet. Or if we make changes to it on the page, we can basically replace or update it. Let's shift gears now and talk about the other tabs in the library panel. These other tabs are called page libraries and display HTML pages with selectable elements. The number of extra tabs depends on the framework being used. These built-in tabs display many of the same elements found in the list tab, but in a format so that you can see what they will look like on the final web page and with variants of the basic elements such as added styling. This allows you to put together a complex page more quickly. In this example, I have a Bootstrap 4 template open, which has one additional built-in page library called Components. Let's see what it looks like. Items from the additional tabs can be added to either the page view or the tree view, just like the list elements, by dragging them to the desired location. You can also drag portions of the element by first clicking on the element to separate it into its component pieces. While this is an artificial example, for example, if we only wanted the button from the card, we'd click on the card and then select the button and drag it over. One powerful feature of PineGrow is the ability to open custom page libraries, either local HTML files or from the internet as a library of elements. One caveat is that you're only bringing in the HTML code displayed on the page, not any CSS styling that's being added. Clicking on the plus icon in the library panel opens a context window which displays recently used library tabs, as well as an option to open a custom library window. Selecting this brings up a dialog window. Within this dialog, we have a few choices. First, you can select either a local or a remote page to be loaded. Simply type in the URL. This can have an impact on how the page is displayed if there's dynamic content added by the remote server. While optional, you can next give this page a name for easy loading from the library's list. The next two optional fields allow us to make selecting items on the page a little easier. The component selector allows us to define what we want to be selectable at a top level on the page. For example, if we know we're adding a bootstrap page, we might specify that the main selector is dot container or all things with a class of container. This means that when we hover over the page, it will highlight only elements with a class of container, which in bootstrap are usually the parent elements with content inside. Much like items from the other components page, we can still click on the highlighted element to select pieces of code inside, but it makes the selection a little easier. The navigation selector allows us to exclude elements from the selection process, such as navigation bars. We're going to load this page without any optional values filled in. Once our page is loaded, any of the page items, unless they were excluded, can be dragged to our page view or tree. In order to select the proper item that we want, PineGrow displays breadcrumbs at the bottom of the window. If we find that we have selected only a child element to drag to the page, when we actually want the child element and its parent, we just need to correct, click on the correct element in the breadcrumb before dragging. The page library tabs have a few extra options at the top. For the built-in libraries to allow for quicker navigation, there's a drop-down menu. This allows you to skip between the different sub-panels. Both types of page libraries also have a control for turning page clicks on and off. This allows you to preview the impact of a page click or allow for clicking on a page link. They both also have a zoom feature to allow you to display the library full size while taking up less screen real estate. Finally, the custom page library tabs also have forward and back icons that function like those buttons on your web browser to step forward or back in page navigation. And also a drop down that lets you change the tab settings or reload the whole page. This completes this deep dive into the library panel. As I think you can see, PineGrow provides a wide variety of ways to bring pre-made elements into your visual design process. I hope this tutorial helps someone to simplify and speed up their build process. Until the next tutorial, have fun designing with PineGrow.